Good day and welcome to the One Smart International Education Group Limited Financial Results for the Third Quarter of 2020 Conference Call. All participants will be in a listen only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star then 1 on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, please press star then 2. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Ms. Idao Yu, Investor Relations Director. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator. Good morning, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining One Smart International Education Group Limited. The 30th quarter 2020 earnings conference call. The company's earnings results, as well as the supplementary slide presentation, were released earlier today and are available on the company's IR website at ir.onesmart.org. Joining me this call are Mr. Steve Zhang, Chairman and the Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Greg Zhou our Chief Financial Officer and Chief Strategic Officer. I will remind you that this call may contain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Such statements are based on management's current expectations and current market and operating conditions and relate to events that involve known or unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors, all of which are difficult to predict and many of which are beyond the company's control, which may cause the company's actual results, performance, or achievements to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statement. Further information regarding these and other risks, uncertainties, and factors is included in the company's filings with the United, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. The company does not undertake any application to update any forward-looking statement as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise accepted as required in the law. With that, I will now turn the call over to Steve. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Ida. Uh, hello, everyone, and thank you all for your interest in today's earnings presentation. The third fiscal quarter 2020 was the most challenging one in our 12 years operation history. Strictly following local government guidelines, we have taken proper measures to protect health and the safety of our students and employees. Meanwhile, our teachers and advisors dedicated to prepare our students both academically and mentally for the Gaokao and the Zongkao, which are key milestones in every Chinese student's lifetime. Our efforts have been much appreciated by our students and their parents. Uh, Greg will give you more uh, details later. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes to review our strategic focus with you. Consistently, our business and the growth is guided by three priorities. Uh, firstly, One Smart has a premium brand positioning. This is evidenced by our remarkable track record of one smart student's academic excellence. College admission rate of one smart student is more than 50% higher than uh, national average, and high school admission rate of one smart student is 40 to 50% uh, higher than the average for China major cities. We invest in our premium quality of teaching, services, and learning centers to meet the growing needs. Secondly, we design our products and services oriented by customers. We respond to their increasing needs for personalized learning with more caring and engagement. Personalized curriculum is designed for each individual student to make smart use of time and drive excellent results. Last but not least, we continuously upgrade our products and technologies to enhance the learning experience and the effectiveness. We have developed a robust teaching system, UBC, data-driven OMO tools and platforms, AI-powered by smart online, etc. <clears throat> All those priorities mentioned above will enable us to enhance the brand value 
to expand the share further in the material markets and penetrate into new markets in a disciplined manner. With that, I will now turn the call over to Greg, who will provide you more updates on the company performance. Uh, Greg, please go ahead. Thank you, Steve. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today. Let me start with the overall business update. The fundamentals continue to be solid, with one-on-one -on -one demand becoming stronger through our short-term operations on impact by COVID-19. In Q1, the hardest hit quarter, all of our learning centers have been temporarily closed. All public schools in China have also been temporarily closed without reopen schedule being provided. All classes and customer acquisitions conducted through our online platform until late May. The latest update is, as of August 4th, more than 90% of centers have been reopened. However, we think the work is past. We remain very positive for the long-term outlook due to four main reasons. First, the demand for highly effective and premium education services is increasing and it will gain market shares. Second, increasing numbers of consumers are better educated and become convinced that one-on-one -on -one format provides a better quality of education. Third, once more upgraded services are receiving extremely positive feedback by parents and students. And four, industry consolidation opportunities arise for once more as a market leader in the premium one-on-one -on -one education service sector. Page six of our prepared presentation summarizes of our online, online, and offline class offerings. Our 12 year solid offline operations cover premium K-12 101 after school children and young children education aged from three to 18 years old. Premium education propelled by online education technology, once more is able to better serve customers with more flexibilities in study schedules and teaching resources with less limitation on, on locations. A combination of offline and online products and services has enhanced customer experience and loyalty, increased smart teaching and management efficiency, and supported of long-term healthy growth. Now please turn to page seven. As shown on this page, One Smart 101, our premium K-12 101 children business has been a solid V-shaped recovery backed by rigid demand. As of today, more than 90% of nationwide learning centers reopened. Students in the cities affected by the resurgence of COVID-19 will continue to have access to once more online to facilitate their ongoing education until further notice. After the Gaokao, cash sales have recovered to grow by 29% and 25% year over year in July and August to date, respectively. In fiscal year 2021, we will continue our center upgrade and expansion in the top 20 cities. According to recent market studies, we have visualized the key consumption habits of our direct customers, as shown on page 8. They are mothers of K-12 students from affluent families in top 50 cities in China. They pursue high-quality lifestyle. They purchase iPhone, Estee Lauder, Louis Vuitton. They drive Mercedes-Benz. They stay in an upscale hotels such as Marriott and Hilton for holidays. They engage private art teachers, private sports coaches for their children. And they are target customer for one small one-on-one business. Based on one of the global leading consumer consulting firms' analysis, so far, one small serves only 3% of those target families. We still have a huge potential to expand our shares in the premium education sector, a large underserved addressable market. Page 9 shows a piece of good news from our one small one-on-one -on -one learning center in Shanghai. We are proud to announce that student Yao has achieved top score in Shanghai Gaokao this year. He has been studying in one smart center for six years. Just quote this his mother as saying, we are grateful to one smart teachers for their dedicated efforts, especially during the pandemic this year. The personalized curriculum and the helpful teaching helped my son to enhance his learning power 
and especially improve his academic score. Again, we congrats Student Yao and his family on the excellent results. We believe more families across China will get engaged with OneSmart because of the results and a great experience. As Steve mentioned earlier, we continue to solidify our premium positioning and the premium pricing power through upgrades in products and services. On page 10, OneSmart 101 Elite VIP program launched since the beginning of fiscal year 2020. We have started to upgrade our learning centers to offer larger classrooms with intelligent and interactive teaching tools and platforms. The better environments enable us to facilitate enjoyable study experience. Under Elite VIP, our students will have highly selected teachers with extensive teaching experience to meet their higher requirements. Year to date, this newly launched product generates cash sales of RMB 94.5 million, representing 3% of one smart one on one business cash sales. Elite VIP priced 40 to 80% higher than our regular one on one class with a high expected margin. We will continue the rollout in fiscal year 2021, starting in September and onwards. Our goal is to generate about 20% of one small one on one business cash sales from the elite VIP program in the near future. Now, let's, let's move on to our younger children education business on page 11. Its recovery has been slower compared with our K 12 one on one children businesses due to later resumption of school activities for younger children in the third fiscal quarter. Most recently, we see a good signal of its growth momentum. Cash sales recovered to grow by 12% year over year in August to date. Based on our recent customer surveys, we believe the primary demand has shifted from elementary school admission preparation to the development of learning power for young children. We will adjust our product and service combinations to quickly capture the evolving needs in the coming years. In fiscal year 2021, starting September, we are going to upgrade products, upgrade and open new centers in selected cities. We will also adopt a product upgrade program under these two brands. Now move on to one small online business, as shown on page 12. Our online classes provide convenience and complementary services to our children in the form of takeout services. For most of our customers, they become engaged with one small education through our offline center, and most of classes are taken on weekends. However, with the introduction of one small online, those existing offline acquired customers are able to schedule their incremental online class throughout the entire week to achieve a higher frequency for better results with less limitation on locations. The additional online class offering will also drive up our subject to student ratio, which is average subject taken by each student. For example, a student takes math course in our offline center while taking history course through our online platform. Currently, our subject to student ratio is about 1.3 and then we expect students would take additional subjects thanks to the convenience and high quality provided by One Small Online as it rolls out. This is targeted to drive up the subject to, rate to student ratio to 1.7 as our target. In fiscal Q3 of 2020, online business generated RMB 59 million in cash sales, a sequential increase of 128% growth accounting for 8% of total cash sales in the quarter. Net revenues from online business totaled RMB 46 million, a sequential increase of 47%, accounting for 6% total net revenues. Those figures reflect pure online users only. If, if we add back online courses taken by offline students, cash sales and net revenue were RMB 165 million and RMB 54 million for fiscal Q3, representing 543% and 74% sequential growth, respectively. Before Ida walks you through financial results in more detail, 
I would like to elaborate on the one of impairment loss in the fiscal Q3, as shown on page 21. In Q3, we booked impairment loss of RMB 335 million related to 15 investment companies. This was primarily caused by COVID-19 outbreak. We used prudent approach in evaluating financial performance of these investment companies and decided to mark down our EV investment amount by at least 80% for 14 of the 15 MST companies. We will continue to stick to a highly selective investment discipline and will only consider opportunities that can immediately help the growth of our core business. After this markdown, our long-term investment balance dropped significantly to 1.1 billion as end of Q3 of fiscal year 2020 from RMB 1.5 billion as end of fiscal year 2019. The remaining investments are expected to be solid with more upside potential than downside in the future. In summary, under the unprecedented event of pandemic, the nature of our personalized education program demonstrated a clear V-shaped performance as students waited in fiscal Q3 for back to schools and exam seasons to resume our services as demonstrated by recent swift rebound and the return of strong year-over-year -year growth in fiscal Q4, our business fundamentals remain solid, and the consumer demand for highly effective and premium education services is increasing. Currently, we expect fiscal Q4 revenue to grow 21% to 34% over fiscal Q3, and the margin to return to the pre-COVID-19 level over the next few quarters. Looking forward, we expect strong revenue growth and the margin recovery in fiscal year 2021 and beyond, primarily underpinned by two major factors. Firstly, the maturing of previously opened learning centers, as 57% of them were opened in the last three years and are ramping up as planned. And secondly, the new offerings of upgraded premium products, which should bring in improved economics over the next few years. With that, I will turn the call over to Ida. Ida, please. Thank you, Brad. In the third quarter of fiscal 2020, net revenues were IMB 744.9 million, a decrease of 31.9% from IMB 1093.3 million during the same period last year. The decrease was mainly attributable to the temporary shutdown of our offline learning centers for COVID-19 related government requirements, offset by the incremental volume from online platforms. Cost of revenues decreased by 11% year over year to RMB 482.6 million. We actively managed down the staff costs, rental costs, and other related costs, partially offset by the increase in the depreciation and amortization costs related to our center expansion and upgrade prior to the pandemic. Selling and marketing expenses decreased, decreased by 17% year over year to RMB 165 million. Non-GAAP selling and marketing expenses, which includes share-based compensation expenses, were RMB 164.8 million a decrease of 17% from RMB 198.5 million during the same period last year. The decrease was primarily due, due to our disciplined expense control and the less cash sales generated during the quarter when all learning centers remained closed until late May 2020. General and administrative expenses decreased by 23.7% year over year to RMB 174.7 million. Non GAAP general and administrative expenses, which exclude share based compensation, were RMB 136.9 million, a decrease of 35.9% from RMB 213.8 million during the same period last year. The decrease was primarily due to our expense control policy to keep a healthy financial condition during COVID-19. 
Let me now move on to cover some other key financial points for the third fiscal quarter of 2020. Capital expenditures for Q3 this fiscal year were on the 20 million, a increase of 45% from RMB 37 million in the same period last year. Capital expenditures accounted for 2.7% of net revenues in Q3, representing a year-over-year decrease of 70 basis points from 3.4% in the same period last year. The differences were mainly because we prudently managed our cash flow and temporarily suspended leasehold improvements due to COVID-19. When smart prepayments from customers balance, which represents cash collected from enrolled students for courses and recognized proportionately as the training sessions are delivered, was RMB 2,359 million at the end of fiscal year 2020 Q3, a year-over-year -year increase of 6.4% from the end of fiscal year 2019 Q3. As of May 31st, 2020, the company had cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash and short-term investments of RMB 1,805 uh, million. Based on our latest estimates, we expect to generate net revenues of RMB 900 million to RMB 1 billion for the fiscal Q4, representing a sequential growth of 21 to 34%. This outlook reaffirms our revenue guidance of RMB 3,330 3, to 3,430 million for the full fiscal year 2020. However, this outlook represents one smart current view, which is subject to change because the COVID-19 impact is still ongoing and its future development remains unclear. This concludes our prepared remarks. I will now turn the call over to the operator and open for Q&A. Operator, we are ready to take questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then 1 on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then 2. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. And our first question comes from Shang Zong of Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good evening, uh, Steve and uh, uh, Greg. Uh, my, uh, thank you for taking my questions. The first question is, uh, can, I, can I ask what the margin outlook for Q4? And uh, secondly, uh, the, your online business uh, looks, uh, uh, um, the trend is very good. And so can you share some um, uh, of the near-term target of the uh, online business, maybe as a percentage of your uh, VIP business? And um, uh, and uh, do you see any uh, cannibalization with your offline business? And uh, uh, so with the uh, with the online business growth, what's your plan for the offline business capacity expansion in uh, in the rest of this year and also in next year? Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Shen, I appreciate your question. Thank you so much for uh, joining this call. Uh, let me uh, take your questions one at a time. Uh, first question regarding margin outlook for Q4. Um, so as, as we mentioned that we have received very strong cash sales in the recent months for July and August. Uh, those are actually uh, a record number historically for us. So that indicate very strong demand in our core business, uh, especially after Jinkong and Gaokao. So with that, we provided a guidance of RMB 900 to 1 billion uh, revenue for Q4. So as we also mentioned earlier that during the COVID-19 period, we have done an excellent job in terms of cost and expense control, So which means we have now a leaner cost structure. 
So we are pretty optimistic on our margin outlook for Q4. Um, it will still be hard to provide exact uh, margin number as a guidance, but if you use Q4's results as a proxy, which as you know, we generated RMB of 745 million in revenue and a small law operating loss of 39 million for non-gap operating losses. If, if we, our revenue can increase uh, and generate 900 to 1 billion, we expect a pretty sizable positive operating income for Q4. So for your second question regarding uh, once more online, our target share and, and in, in terms of percentage of our offline one-on-one -on -one business. Let me, uh, let, me, uh, let me elaborate that. Once more online, we'll, we'll continue and grow uh, as part of a core business strategy. We appreciate its uh, value in terms of providing convenience and the complementary services to our existing students and potential new students. So um, currently, as you know, in Q4, once more I took about 8% of our cash sales. We expect consumer to continue to experience of once more I its quality and good uh, learning results. So that market share, we expect continue to grow in the future. We don't have the internal target. Uh, we will let consumer to, to decide, to let the convenience and value drive its growth. But in any case, one more online will create incremental growth for us going forward, which means it conserves additional demand for additional customers in the future. So we're very we, uh, thankful to our teams building one more online, especially during the COVID-19 period. Uh, your third question regarding potential cannibalization with the offline operations. So we, I think that's a fair question. I think we have observed and studied um, similar situations in other players of the industry who experienced the same thing. That, that clearly was a, was a problem. But let me, let, me, let me elaborate, let me emphasize that. Uh, the one small one on one business, it serves a different demand. Uh, especially on my channel, it provides convenience, provides flexibility, and more choices for our students. So we have explained in the previous earnings call that once more online will provide a complementary services to the existing students as well as provide access for us for additional new students in the areas that our offline center couldn't cover yet. So having that in mind, so we, we have clearly uh, organized our teams in the format that, for example, for the middle of the week, additional higher frequency online class demand, we have our existing offline team to handle those businesses. Clearly, that's alignment of interest, there's no conflict. But for additional new customers that where our existing learning center cannot serve, we have a separate team to run that business because it clearly has different uh, in nature. We have clearly uh, separated two teams in terms of geographic uh, divisions. That clearly helps us to avoid any colonization and potential conflict. So, so far we have been operating pretty smoothly in that side. We don't see any major internal uh, conflict and then cannibalization from a customer perspective. Um, your fourth question is regarding capacity expansion plans going forward. Um, let me, for the near future, as we mentioned, our strategic focus is the elite VIP program. So in Q4 and, and, and fiscal year 2021, we will, we will continue and spend a lot of time to upgrade our learning center, and open new VIP learning center, as well as uh, open more uh, VIP classrooms for our students. That's a clear focus. But in terms of number of learning center expansions, um, we have two separate uh, expansion strategies. For the one-on-one, -on -one, we have been very clear. We want to further continue to grow our top 20 cities so we can achieve the economy of scales for those 20 cities. So we'll continue to open more learning centers in the new fiscal year for the one-on-one -on -one business. But for, for 
young children education program, as we mentioned earlier, it took a little long time to resume its normal operations as, as the COVID-19 impact and uh, public school reopening schedule been a little bit behind schedule. So we will, our priority, our priority is to fill in the existing centers for the young children. But in the meantime, we will also upgrade our young children programs by opening some VIP learning centers as well as upgrades and classrooms. So this, this summarizes our expansion strategy going forward. Thank you, Greg. Our next question comes from Felix Liu of UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening, management. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, my first question is regarding to our uh, growth trajectory from here. I understand that Q3 has been, you know, uh, negatively impacted by COVID-19. But when do you uh, expect the revenue uh, level to return back to normal uh, going forward? Uh, what are the recovery trajectory for the top line as well as uh, the margin? Uh, my second question is on consumer preference post uh, COVID-19. Uh, we hear some uh, competitors saying that uh, a portion of the parents are now uh, becoming more open to the online format. Uh, is that consistent of uh, what we're seeing in the one on one space? Uh, my third question is on our learning center uh, resumption or ramp up uh, by CDT. We, under, we understand that uh, you have a, a very matured or, or, or successful operations in Shanghai. Uh, how are the situations outside Shanghai? I, I recall previously, uh, you know, during the period of your rapid expansion, uh, the utilization of non Shanghai so are relatively under pressure. So, so well, when do we expect that to to improve uh, going forward? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Phoenix. Uh, so, the, the first question regarding the revenue and margin trajectory from here. So, obviously, Q3 has been a quarter mostly hit by COVID-19, but as we have explained earlier in the call that we have seen and observed very strong demand for our business uh, in the recent months. Uh, so I think in our discussion with our consumer um, parents and students, you know, these people experience pretty um, difficult and special time. In, during the uh, February to June, they experienced uh, the lockdown of the country and the close down of public schools, they had lots of uncertainty on Zoom Kong Gaokao schedule. So they have taken a lot of online classes during the period of time. And later on, they all have to face the exams, especially Zoom Kong Gaokao, which is delayed to one month this year, as you, as you know. So they have learned a lot during that period of time for, to, to compare different education programs, whether it's online or offline. But their conclusion clearly is that once month one on one, a program is clearly very effective, provides the best customer experience in helping them. As we have elaborated um, earlier in this discussion, Zhong Kao and Gao results for our students have been very excellent this year. So that probably explains why we have seen uh, cash sales growth of 25 to 29% year over year. Uh, we reported recently. Um, so we are very encouraged by this result. So with that, we will we'll, we'll predict a pretty strong growth for new fiscal year 2021 starting starting September. We would we expect to resume our historical top line growth pattern of 30 percent plus uh, next year. So if just margin, if if top line growth resume to the normal level with the linear cost structure that we um, we achieved during the COVID-19 period, we, we are optimistic on margin as well. So we expect to, the margin to, to be back to the pre-COVID level in, in the next few quarters. But the exact timing is hard to say for margin, as, as you can imagine. And plus Q1 next year still will have some tail impact by COVID-19 and Q1 
which is September to November, historically has been a low season in terms of the press activity. So I think you will see more positive margin expansion towards later on of the year. Um, so that, that, that answers the first question. The, the second question regarding consumer preference, I think that's an excellent uh, question. We have done a lot of uh, research consumer service internally as well because during that period of time, obviously consumer experience a lot of learning education programs online and offline. But let me let me one point a few points. Number one, one month one on one premium education services serve a very different demand than the typical mass market class format as well as those online education programs. As we mentioned in the last uh, two earnings calls, so we, we are serving the students in the middle school and high school who, who appreciate very effective one-on-one -on -one personalized learning experience, which can help them quickly in, improve their scores and do well in their exams, especially Zhongkou and Gaokao. So we did, in our survey of 2,500 uh, parents, not, more than 90% of them have responded and said they prefer uh, one smart, one on one uh, education services, especially in the offline centers, which they believe provide better results than other online platforms. Having said that, I think I, we also recognize that some of the uh, parents, they still appreciate online uh, channels because online provides convenience, more choices, and better teachers, right? So I think, uh, we'll, as I mentioned earlier, we will let parents and, and students to decide whether they want to do online or offline, but we provide both services in a high quality uh, uh, fashion. So I think to, to summarize, I think if the consumer wanted to have a quality education and premium experience, I think clearly one small online and one small offline uh, provide the best services. So I think that, that, that answers your second question regarding consumer preferences going forward. I think your last question regarding the, the learning center ramp up uh, situation, especially in Land Shanghai Learning Center. As, as I mentioned, that we still have a pretty large number of learning centers that are uh, quite young. So I mentioned 57% of them opened in the last three years. So clearly, they are running up at land, as I mentioned, in, in Shanghai as well as non Shanghai cities. We didn't provide the ramp up results this quarter because those are, as you know, during the May, so March to May period the COVID period, but we will continue to disclose our ramp-up records in Q4 and, uh, and beyond. But I, I can tell you, our ramp-up is still and largely on track as we have been previously provided, which means that the follow a pretty healthy pattern of uh, margin um, ramp-up and offline ramp-up. So with this large number of learning centers being ramping up at the same time, we are very confident our performance and margin recovery uh, going forward, which ties back to earlier questions. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Greg. Very helpful. Our next question comes from Tommy Wong of China Merchants Securities. Please go ahead. Oh, hi, management. Uh, thank you for the, uh, for the opportunity to ask questions. Oh, hi, Greg. Um, just a quick question. Uh, I think a lot of people in the offline business right now are talking about the uh, industry consolidation. And I think it's not about this year. I think it's about next year or even the year after. Um, I know we have added a lot of uh, capacity before and we were trying to increase utilization. But the, on, on the other hand, uh, I heard from you know, other players like 40, 30% of Shanghai tuning centers have shut down. And so, you know, it seems like a lot of the competition has you know, disappeared, and so uh, how do we, you know, how do you think about, you know, the investment? Uh, you know, what are you, what is the nice thing to think about investment for uh, you know, expansion over the next year? And what, what are you hearing uh, from the uh, local market about this, uh, you know, so-called industry consolidation? Thank you.
Yeah, thank you, Tommy, for your question. I think this is a good question as well. We uh, we actually mentioned this earlier in our presentation that consoli consolidation is a long-term positive factor for our performance going forward. And then we echo your observation and discussion with other players. We have observed similar trends. I think a lot of smaller scale players has been pretty challenging for them to, to recover. So we observed that when the government allowed the reopening of learning centers, we, we found that many of them cannot be reopened for forever. So I think this is factor in our one-time impairment losses as well. For a lot of smaller players that we, we, we invested in, we gained the insight that their performance has been tough. That means opportunity for a larger player like us. We are market leader in the one-on-one -on -one space. Uh, as you've seen, our oh, very rapid and swift V-shaped uh, rebound of our cash sales. Actually, I think part is because of that reason. You know, we, you know, previously we were finding it harder for for our new signing of new students to walk in, but we found out our conversion rates uh, and number of walk in to our learning center has much much improved than before. So that's very encouraging in the sense for us to to going forward. So with that in mind, we'll continue to focus on the cash sales and the signing of new students, which, as you know, will generate uh, future revenues. And also, we, had, we will also do opportunistic acquisitions of, you know, maybe not companies, but also but, but students nearby. So we will try to acquire uh, students of other players in, in a large number uh, through some uh, transaction and arrangements to take advantage of these opportunities. So to, to summarize, we do believe uh, industry consolidation provides a positive opportunity for a larger place like us. And it will continue and to take, a, take advantage of that. Okay, thanks, uh, makes sense. Thank you, good luck, thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Ms. Ida Yu for any closing remarks. Thank you, operator. In closing, on behalf of the entire management team, we'd like to thank you again for your participation in today's call. If you have any further inquiries in the future, please feel free to contact. Thank you. Bye-bye. The conference has now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation and you may now disconnect.